Hello class, uh, this video uh, is covering some of the information that I had provided in the previous video, but by request I had promised one of my students that I will make another video covering uh, a little bit more uh, details about what is required for this assignment. And so because of her request I decided to use the poem uh, that she's having difficulties with and also a couple other students. So uh, this is a specialized video so if you feel like you have a grasp on the assignment uh, you do not need to watch it but if you feel like you're not sure of where to go, what to do, uh, this video may help. And it, it does apply also to the short story, but again, I am focusing primarily on uh, the poetry analysis because most of the students are doing poetry. Uh, and again, I'm doing the Kudandera story because it is difficult to blend the two uh, concepts as far as finding sources and your interpretation together. So again, uh, I hope this is helpful, um, but if you have questions, remember you can always contact me. So what I tend to do is uh, I always begin with planning and that's some of the problems that I'm seeing with the drafts that I've, uh, I've looked at so far is that we're, you guys are skipping the planning part. Uh, you're not going through the whole process of critical reading. You're not asking those questions and because of that you're finding this paper difficult. Um, so uh, you, if you haven't read the, your, your poem several times, you haven't analyzed it, you haven't asked those questions, that's where you need to begin before you can get to the interpretation part. Remember, you analyze, you question, you infer, then you interpret. Uh, so if this is if you're having problems at that point, you need to go back. Uh, this is at the interpretation part that you actually start planning and drafting your paper. Okay, so this is a very... Uh, rough outline, uh, but I'll show you how I build from this type of outline. So what I tend to do after I have created my interpretation, which is your thesis, which should answer the main question for the research uh, topic, uh, and then you start building like what key uh, points do you want to mention. So uh, your introduction should have a paragraph that provides the author, author's biographical information and also where the poem was originally published. You need that information because, again, you're establishing your credibility at the very beginning. And then followed by that would be your thesis. Now, my thesis is a little rough, and I am aware of that. So once I start building my paper, I'm going to leave myself room to make changes if necessary. But my primary interpretation will stay the same. So my claim is, while some readers may see Morris Kudundera as a praise of an old woman's mundane life, the sophistication of her prose revealed the sacred power of the Latina women. And that goes back to my title. You make sure that you have an original title that grabs the reader's attention. And so I'm taking some of the concepts that we watched in the video uh, to build my title, La Malinche's Borderlands Revisited and Pat Moore's Cudendera. Because those are the things that I'm going to talk about, the La Malinche tale, the Borderlands, all that is, are, are important concepts that I am going to put in my paper. Okay, so my points that will help to support my interpretation of the sophistication of the, pro the prose reveals the sacred power of Latina women will be the point of view because it's told in third person limited, the imagery, and the structure. I'm going to have two paragraphs on the structure. One that's going to cover internal, one's going to cover external because I think those are uh, important concepts. Because I love poetry, I always, <laughs> I, I sometimes fall back on the fact that the structure is just as important as, as the words. So I oftentimes tend to talk about structure. Uh, but again, if that's not something that you want to talk about, you don't have to. Again, this is what I feel will best to serve my claim. You must pick the concepts that will best serve your claim. So this is my very rough outline, but I'm going to build from this rough outline and make something much more detailed. And from the detailed, I build a paper. So from that point, this is my very detailed outline. Let me go back to the top. And another thing that I always tend to do, I always put my paper in MLA page format because again, that's one less step that I have to do. And it gets me into the habit of doing it and learning from it. <clears throat> so again, uh, my introduction is going to provide biographical information, the name of the book the poem was published, but I'm going to provide details that are pertinent about more or not, just, you know, just anything, but important details that may help my readers understand my, my, my claim. 
And then there is my thesis. I added the, the phrase, the speaker's praise, just to make sure that it's clear that it's not the praise of the old woman, but it's the speaker talking about the uh, curandera. Uh, and so again, my point of view is my first body paragraph, aside my first body paragraph, not my introductory paragraphs, but body paragraphs. And again, if you go back to my my outline, that's the first thing that I have listed. I'm going to move from my weakest point to my strongest point. Uh, and so, what I've done for this for this video is that I went ahead and filled in all my details. Typically, you wouldn't have to do all of that. So, like for instance, for my paragraphs on imagery and my two paragraphs on structures, I just gave a sentence. Um, but for again for the video i want to give you much more detail so you can show how you can move from a detailed outline to a nice well-developed paragraph so my first paragraph um, is about point of view and again some students were having difficulty finding sources so um, really quickly i want to show you how i found my sources i went to the two databases that i had mentioned in class literary reference center and literature resource center now literature reference center I found more results for this particular poem than I did for a literature resource center. Uh, and so the ones that I had chosen was the prose poetry, Pat Mora, the habit of exploring uh, the English language, uh, from Chance to Borders, because again, I'm talking about the book Chance, and I'm also talking about her borders. So I used those three, but I also used the ebook that you can also find. <clears throat> For literature and it talks about more and also talks about um, the curandera story further on down the line yes there it is but it also talks about her structure and her form and other things that I find to be uh, quite relevant for me and my interpretation of the text so there are sources there but they require that you go into looking for sources that best benefit your interpretation I can't stress that enough so going back to my detailed outline, um, you see that I have certain words bolded in black and other things bolded in red. What you see bolded in black helps to support, again, my point about the point of view. What you see in red helps to support what I'm saying about point of view as it relates back to my claim. That is oftentimes the problem with the papers is that you may have a strong claim, but the body paragraphs don't support it. Or you may have great body paragraphs, but there is no claim. It has to all work together. So you must begin by creating a claim and actually working through how everything that you will say will help to support it. So it is good practice to build your papers and then find those key words that help to support it. So you hear I have third person view, disconnectedness, viewpoint, perspective, vantage point, alienation, speaker's objectivity, observer. These are all words that tie back into my point of view. But my point of view, again, helps to show the sacred power of the Latina women. So that's why you see words like respect, otherworldly, fees on separateness, borders, again going back to my title, the connection, this is all things that I have in here that help to support it. I also have textual proof both from my primary source and notice that I have my nice little dash there because the dash shows the separation in lines. So I also have my primary source and it's cited with my line number cited, but I also have my secondary source in here that helps to support what I'm saying. Now this sort this source here doesn't talk specifically about the poem the Curandera, but it talks about some of the common themes and, and concepts and what Moore is trying to do through her poetry as far as it ties into borders and alienation and the Hispanic culture. So I am I must make the connections clear for my readers. So your sources may not make the connection, but you must make the connection clear. So I'm going to quickly read this paragraph and then I'll show you how you can uh, move to uh, a, 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 an analysis. The third person view suggests the disconnectedness yet respect the narrator has for the old or the otherworldly entity. 
The speaker describes like a large black bird, she feeds on the desert, gathering herbs in her basket. This separateness is one of the Borders Mora's poetry explores. This viewpoint, Brolin West believes, serves to provide perspectives from which to observe and understand two cultures. Such a vantage point tends to make one feel like an outsider, so alienation also becomes a central condition of border life. Even though the speaker remains unaware of what goes on with the Kudendera, apart from what she, ooh, excuse me, Apart from what she hears from the townspeople, the, the speaker's objectivity transitions to adoration. Like the speaker, readers are observers of the Kudendera's action, and while her connection is with the earth, readers connect to her, which is one of Mora's common themes. Through this empathetic observation, readers learn the power of these borders and the Kudendera. Okay, so this is one of my paragraphs. So what I could do, I've already developed my idea in this outline and again I like to do this because I can be chaotic sometimes as you many of you know uh, but I can also come down here to the bottom and there's my power my work site I'll talk about that in a moment but I can come down to the bottom just to see what it looks like <clears throat> so I'm gonna fix the formatting because again I, I want it to look nice I want to see what it looked like if I this was a body paragraph so here is my body paragraph. And this body paragraph alone is 160 words. So it's a well-developed paragraph. I have my primary source. I have my secondary source. I have my main idea. I have my concluding sentence. So I have everything there that will make a nice developed uh, paragraph. Although it's not edited, it is a draft and it is a well-developed draft so that one part is done uh, and then you know again I can add it more to it if I need to or I can take some away but again I have a nicely developed paragraph that will help to support my initial claim up here so again this is one of the advantages of doing the very detailed outline again you don't have to but I, I personally like to work that way Another thing that I like to do as I draft my papers is that I like to build my work cited. I hate to wait until the last minute because oftentimes, like you or any uh, anybody else, we get rushed. So as you find your sources, you should take a moment to email them to yourself like I did. And then you can always, again, highlight it, do your control C, and then move to your document and then add it to your document. Uh, and then that way you don't have to worry about it uh, at the last minute. So again, I have my four secondary sources, but I also have my primary. So make sure that you do have that primary cited as well. I hope this helps. I am sorry for my squeaky voice, um, but if you have any questions again, I am more than to help, happy to help you with those. Um, good luck, and I will be talking to you soon.